social media video that's gone viral shows four men in the back of a white Toyota ute dragging the corpses of three naked men by ropes tied around their ankles. And a group of men stands around a dozen half-naked young men's bodies sprawled on scrubby grass by a river. At least one of the men's ankles are bound. Gorifi Kenneth is a famous Papua New Guinean journo who's experienced in covering the kind of violence that breaks out between Highland tribes. She's a senior reporter with The Post Courier, based in Port Moresby. I spoke with Gorifi over the phone from Port Moresby about the moment she, like everyone else in PNG, saw the footage going viral on WhatsApp groups over the weekend. Gorifi has been a journalist for more than two decades and she's planning a trip to Enga province to check out the conflict for herself. Down in the bustling city of Moresby, locals aren't shocked by the sight of naked corpses being dragged through the street in the same way we might be, watching from thousands of kilometres away. As it happened, it was being talked about. On a higher level, it is still being talked about the fact that there is tribal fighting not in the whole of uh, Enga province, but in specific locations in the province. In, but on the streets of Port Mosby, a few are talking about it as well. So, I mean, it's, it's become normal for Papua New Guineans to expect things like this to happen. Mm. How bad is it at the moment, Gorothy? Is this the worst tribal violence you've seen in your career as a journalist? No. Yes and no. Yes, in the sense tying these people and pulling them on the road. But there have been other tribal fights that I've covered, some I've seen. The Post Courier has a network of reporters and photographers based in the provinces who risk their own safety to report for the paper. Tribal fights are common up in the Highlands region. It used to happen, but because of the technology that we didn't have, that's why we didn't know about it. But I shouldn't say it's a norm. But it happens. It's common knowledge for us Papua New Guineans that tribal fights are known in the highlands. That's one. Or secondly, is when it comes, once it comes, yes, we can talk about it now, but it will die out the next day. And then we expect the next province or the next place for a tribal fight to happen again. That's just how it's been. So what are they fighting for? On the one hand, Papua New Guinea is in the grip of a financial crisis. Formal employment is low, developments are faltering, and export revenues are too low. On the other hand, the population is surging. It means the government is struggling to provide the most basic services, even in metropolitan areas, and looking after people in regional and remote parts of the nation is a near impossibility. The people living in those regions lean on tribal structures and churches to provide the support the government can't. Gorothy says there's also a large amount of tribal infighting over land and infrastructure projects like roads. The conflict in Enga province is just one of a number of clashes simmering across PNG. And local police say they're just not able to arrest their way out of this situation. Seriously, we need Australia to come in and assist. This morning I did an interview with Dostop and Prime Minister heading to Wabeg, down where the fighting area is, in Anga. And then he announced, officially announced, that come October Parliament session, they will amend the Travel Fight Act and including the life imprisonment for people who are engaged in it. PNG politicians are calling for Australia to assist. So why aren't our cops boarding planes already? We'll find out just after this break. In 2021, Solomon Islands Prime Minister Manasa Sogobare called on Australia to help quell violence in his capital, Honiara. Australia was quick to respond, acutely conscious that China is quick to offer aid and policing assistance to any Pacific nation in need. And the Australian government has agreed to respond to that request. And we've agreed 
uh, to send a detachment of up to 23 AFP personnel who are deploying immediately. Papua New Guinea, on the other hand, is Australia's closest neighbour. It isn't quite as cosy with China as the Solomons, but there is a serious roadblock to Australia getting involved, even as the province's governor and other MPs beg for help. Currently, there's a constitutional issue that prevents Australian police getting immunities from prosecution if they were to be in a frontline role and, for example, kill the wrong person or do something that sparked a legal challenge. Ben Packham is the Australian's foreign affairs and defence correspondent. So in the past, we did provide that sort of frontline support, but we cannot do it anymore since a legal challenge some years ago that found that that was not in line with the country's constitution. Now, the country can change its constitution. You don't need a referendum like in Australia. So it is possible that there will be a constitutional amendment, but that would be a big step. The possibility of prosecution means the police we do have in PNG are limited in their ability to help. So at the moment, there's just over 30 AFP officers in Papua New Guinea, and they are confined to the capital, Port Moresby, and the industrial centre in Ley. Well, they're not permanently stationed in the highlands where most of the violence is. They support local counterparts in improving their systems and evidentiary techniques and so forth, but they're not able to really have a show of force like we saw in Solomon Islands, for example. But this conflict is different. Women and children are being caught in the crossfire and the arrival of automatic weapons and mercenaries, that is, guns for hire, working for one tribe or another, are escalating the violence. This is a source of great embarrassment for PNG. It's very sensitive to the idea that parts of it are primitive. So I think it's a very sensitive issue for PNG and it's a sensitive issue for our bilateral relationship because Australia cannot come in and just impose its will on our near neighbour. It's a sovereign country and it will take its own steps to deal with this. Just unfortunately, they're not able to get on top of it. So will Australia get involved? It depends on the government of James Marape, but Ben believes something has to change. My instinct is, yes, Australia will really need to lift its law and justice support for Papua New Guinea. The Albanese government just recently released its new foreign aid policy. And a key plank of that was helping our Pacific neighbours be effective states and You can't be an effective state where huge numbers of your population are living without services and in fear of their lives. So I think there is a strong case for Australia doing more to help PNG's police force, its courts and its broader public sector to perform better and really start delivering on the promise of the country and its vast natural resources and so forth. But that will be very much dependent on a PNG request. 